Hey guys, before I start, I want to give a little bit of a shout out to CG Shortcuts. Um, he works mostly with Cinema 4D, so C4D, and I just love those videos. And as you can see, there's a lot of inspiration done by uh, this recent video from him. And I actually want to build upon this. This is not just, I'm, I don't just want to copy what he does. I actually want to expand on this. But yeah, to be able to expand on this, we need to make this one first, right? So um, for sure, check him out. He makes awesome stuff. And let's get into this. So how are we going to do this in Blender? Well, let's delete the default cube and let's add a circle. So after we have the circle, we need to add a screw modifier here. So the screw modifier looks a bit weird right now and it doesn't really screw or anything. So let me show you what it does. If we go into, if we go into edit mode, you can click on tab and just move this away here. So now it's screwing, but we do not want to screw it around this side. We actually want to screw it around here. That's way better, right? And with the screw, we have it now at zero and that's why it just goes round. So it's kind of a donut right now, but if you screw it up, you can see that we actually can get this um, screw going. So if you just do the angle a little bit higher, angle you can see that it turns multiple rounds so it's like 360 times four so now it makes four rounds right uh, these steps are obviously not enough so I'm gonna make way more steps in them because we want it nice and smooth right so uh, steps you can also go into your wireframe mode to see how many steps you are taking and I rather have a little bit too much so uh, 120 steps for me is okay. So I'm just gonna delete all the vertices except one. And this seems a little bit counterintuitive, but it will make sense later on. So we can also choose how thick we want this. And this is essentially the inner side. So if I look at my Photoshop, this is like this inner, inner one here. Okay, so choose how big you want it. And you can just go into edit mode and move it around in certain axis, okay? So I think somewhere around here will look cool. Yeah, that seems okay. And we can also change the height. So if we actually have a certain height, so let's do five and then change everything according that again. So uh, maybe it's a little bit smaller, something like this. So now we know it is five high, so this is five units, right? So let's duplicate this, and then we're gonna call the first one the inner spiral, and the duplicate the outer spiral. How do we make this outer spiral to go more out? Well, it's quite easy actually, and that is we need to add a, make sure you're in the middle by the way, and add a um, lattice, and this lattice is, gonna move around our outer spiral okay so i'm gonna move this around the z axis for two and a half gz 2.5 and now it's perfectly in the middle and i'm gonna scale it up so it, just so everything fits inside and then scale around the z axis also to everything fits inside okay it does not have to be too specific just make sure everything fits awesome so this is a lattice and if we select our outer spiral and I'm gonna hide off my inner spiral for right now. But if we're gonna select our outer spiral, we can also give this a lattice deform uh, modifier and select the lattice. Now, if we move this lattice around, so I'm gonna select it, you can see that everything inside it will move with it, okay? And we want the inner ones to move out, but you can see that we cannot move it. So if you actually go into here, you have a new, um, little tab, you can put the resolution up. So I'm gonna put the resolution up for every axis here. And now we are to have the ability to select the middle one and scale it up. But if you look from the top, you can see that it also gets squished together. It's quite hard to see, but I think it's better if we select all of the outer ones, like in the middle, 
and then scale them up a little bit so just so we have a more of a rounded version and if you want to be very sure you can always add a cylinder in here and just use this, use this as our yeah just our as our reference to make it nice and round again because it did make it a little bit less round which is um, yeah less desirable in my opinion I hope that made sense I'm gonna delete this again it's round for us right now so that's perfect and so if we are gonna make our inner spiral active again you can see that um, yeah we have two different ones right and <laughs> I think I'm gonna make the outer spiral a little bit bigger still. So we just have to select off this, scale it up a little bit like this. And what I want to do is I want to merge them together, but there is one big difference here. And that is our, let me hide this for a second. Our outer spiral should go the other way around, right? Now it just goes the same way around and we don't want that. So if you go actually into our modifiers, you can change the screw instead of minus or instead of 1440 to minus 1440. So just do a minus in here and it will go the other way around. Awesome. So now we want to match these up, right? But they are, yeah, they are too far away from each other. So if you accept, if you go to your lattice again, and if you're gonna, and let's select our top and our bottom plane, not the middle then skill and then shift set okay skill shift set it doesn't really show it for some reason hmm. but I'm, I'm doing skill shift set because I don't want them to move around the z-axis that's the only reason and now I want it to move until they touch each other and you can see that they touch each other quite weird But around this is good. Awesome. So now for the outer spiral, I can apply the screw and the lattice. And also for the inner one, I can apply the screw, okay? So I can kind of delete this lattice for right now and join these two together. So I select them both and do Control J. So right now I want to merge them together, right? So what we want to do now is I'm just gonna select these two here. And uh, you can do it in wireframe mode and you select them both at the same time. Alt M and merge at center. And also here at the bottom, just do the same. Uh, stay in wireframe mode, select them both, Alt M, merge at center. So you can see that they obviously make a sharp point downwards and we don't want that. So now just select the top one and the bottom one and just scale them around the Z axis for a little bit. So now this one scales down and this one scales up so they both go in the right way. Awesome, so let's say this is what we want. Then we can go here and we need to give it some thickness. Well, if you select this and go to object, you can actually go to convert to and we can convert a curve from a mesh. So now we have a curve instead of a mesh and we have this neat little tool here and that is we can give this curve a thickness. So if you go to geometry, you can actually give the bevel and uh, some depth. And here, let me show you what it does. This gives us the, us the depth that we want. I'm just gonna give it a smooth shading. But here we have our forms. So I want to make it a bit thicker and I'll do it at point 18. Awesome. So if we make this a mesh again, object, and then convert mesh from curve. Now you can see that we have a mesh again. And if we go to our front view, if we, let's go to side view and select the lowest point, click on Ctrl E and mark the seam. Make sure when you mark the seam, you hold Alt to select the whole edge loop. And I want to give this a seam and also uh, this bottom one, Ctrl E, mark seam. And we can go slide this out and get a UV editor in here. Select everything with A, U, unwrap, and you can see that we have a nice unwrap here. 
awesome. So why did I want this? Well, if we go into shade editor, you can add a material and we do not want just a regular material. We want to do it with a color ramp and we need to, sh this to show this color ramp on which axis we need to go. So we do a texture coordinate node in here. And I also always like to do a mapping node in between here just so I have a little bit more control. Put this factor into fact here and remember we had the texture coordinate, we did the UVs. So the UVs go in here. So now what you can see is it goes from black, dark, here, till white. So it just goes all the way over and that is our color ramp. So we do not want black of course. Let's start with a nice uh, red. So I'm just gonna go here, RGB, and put the red all the way up. I also want to end this on red, okay? So I'm gonna put this also to red. Okay. So I'm gonna add another one, put this to point three, 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 and add another node, and put this to point six, 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 six. <laughs> and let's give the first one a color. I'm gonna do this green, and the second one is gonna be blue. Okay, but you see that it ends already at green here, and we don't want that. So you can do this in multiple ways. You can change this in multiple ways. And the way that I like to do it is just change the scale of your UV maps. So um, right now it's red again, but there is one problem. We have a lot of red now in our scene, which might not be desirable. And if you put the red at this point where it just always a bit higher, now you can scale your model a little bit down and you can see that um, both the sides go towards this point here where our UV is. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain but it's just playing around this red uh, value. See so if I play around with it a little bit you can see that now I kind of fixed it. And if you want more red you can just put the X a little bit lower. I can see that I had some troubles explaining this while editing. Uh, just the thing that you need to do is uh, in the bottom there is a seam and you want to make it all red so the seam disappears. Awesome, so I personally like this and the only thing that I want to do is I want the roughness to be all the way up and that's kind of it for the material. So now. I would like to go into cycles and I want to add an HDRI because right now it looks okay, but it doesn't look the best. So the first thing I want to do is I want to delete this light and now it's all dark and I want to add an HDRI. So if you go to the world and do an environment texture in here, then you open the HDRI. And by the way, this HDRI you can get for free on my website. The link is down below. So just get that. And I'm gonna open our studio small. And now um, let's put the camera in a little bit of a better position. So uh, item will be, I'm just gonna put that zero, 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 zero. And now rotate it and move it wherever I want. So I'm around here. Okay, so now we can check it for a second. This looks decent. There's one thing that I want to change and that is I want this to be a little bit brighter. And also when I render this, I want to give this a transparent shader because I'm just going to put, put a nice black background in there. Uh, and I just that, do, do that on Photoshop. And also we want to give this a animation. So if you go to the timeline, slide one out here, go to the timeline. And let's start our animation at frame zero. So let's look into our model here. And if I click on E, we can insert a keyframe and we'll do the rotation. And then if I rotate this, so let's say at say frame 60, I want to have this rotated for 360 degrees. So if you go to item, you can also do it here. Rotation E and insert keyframe. So there's one thing, it's very cool because if I now put this at 60, it will just keep repeating itself. So it will go rotate and then rotate. But there's one thing in the beginning, you can see that it goes from slow and then it goes fast here and then it slows down again here around 60. 
So how we change that is if we go into here and grab a graph editor, you can see that we have our graph here. And let me make this graph a little bit slower, smaller. I'll do this with control. You can see that this is the graph of the animation. It goes from slow and then it goes stable for a bit and then uh, dims off again, as we saw, right? It goes from slow and this is a normal speed and then it's goes slow here. So if you select them both with just A, you can select them both. Go into key and change the interpolation mode from Bezier to linear. Now you can see that it's a linear line. So if I play this, it will go the same speed all the time. And because frame 60 and frame zero are exactly the same, it seems it start it seems like it stutters a bit because it has the same frame. So if you start this at frame one or end it at frame 59, then you can see that it just keeps repeating itself the whole time. Awesome, so that was it for this little tutorial. I have way more free stuff on my website, by the way, so please check it out, it's really cool. Um, I'm making also paid courses that I put a lot of time and uh, thought into. See you guys next time and peace.